Welcome back to the Wizard Shop, and today we have some really good updates on the Nissan Joke. Let's get started. So for those of you who haven't been following along, most of you have been, this is a 2012 Nissan Juke that I purchased over six months ago. Purposely with a blown engine. The engine was locked up. If you want to know the whole story and get all the details, go back and watch those videos. Search Car Wizard Nissan Juke. There's like four or five videos. You can go see them. It has been quite an ordeal just to get this thing to where it is today. And I am proud to announce it's alive! It's alive! Just like the Frankenstein. It kind of is a Frankenstein looking thing. But yes, the engine is alive. It's fully back together and it runs like a new engine. It didn't need a new engine and like I mentioned it arrived with a locked up engine. The main bearings had seized up but the rest of the engine was okay. It was all caused by somehow a staple got into the oil, got sucked up through the oil screen, pickup screen, and into the pump and locked up the pump solid which means it stopped pumping oil. Some of you commented, Car Wizard placed that staple there. That was fake. That's not true at all. We pulled apart the pump and there it was. I didn't place the staple there. It, I don't know how it got there. Danielson, who actually put this thing together for me and got it running again, thinks that maybe at the factory they had some paperwork or something while they're building the engine, the staple got in it, or who knows. It's been there for since it was new and somehow it finally got sucked up and locked up the pump and killed it. So the oil pump, which was failed, wasn't the hard thing to replace. It was the bearings. Here's all the old bearings and here you can see some of the wiped out old bearings. It's been a while since we actually have done any work to this. We finally got it done. It took two solid days of work. But we did film a small segment showing some information on the bearings. Let's watch that now. Before we install these main bearings into the block and then you don't see them anymore, you can't see them, I want to show them to you guys. It's been a long process and weeks if not months just to locate these bearings. And luckily I had a kind of a friend in Australia that volunteered to help out and he came through with flying colors. This is the original bearings, one of them. It has scuff marks on one side, but it was decent enough that I could use it as a comparison. I went to the Nissan dealership and said, here's my VIN number, here's the vehicle that I have, send me the main bearings. They said, no problem, we'll send them to you. And when they arrived, they're not even the same. They don't even begin to be the same bearing, guys. Look at that, how much shorter it is. All the measurements that I took don't even come close to the original bearing. What is this bearing for? I don't even know what it goes to. I tried another dealership, actually my buddy in Australia said, he asked their dealership in Melbourne and they came up with this same number. and said, yeah, that's for the Juke. No, it's not. This is for the Juke. I don't know what that goes to. But finally, he went to a parts supplier in the area and they sell these ACL Race Series Performance Engine Bearings. And it says Nissan MR16 DDT Standard. So let's go ahead and pull one out here. almost identical. They have a special coating on them so they look like they're gray colored. Let's take a few measurements. This is not super precise using a caliper but at least gives me an idea am I close. So this is the original bearing. You can see it measures 0 0.0775 and it is 2.23 roughly wide and about 695 
wide in that direction. Let's measure, this is the brand new one from Melbourne that my buddy sent me. And we can see 0 0.0775 again. It shows 2.257. It seems a little wider because it's not been compressed in the engine. These are supposed to lock into place with tension. So that makes sense that it would be a little wider that way. And this dimension, 0.665. Finally, we found the correct bearings. So without further ado, let's get these things installed into the block so that we can get this thing back on the road. I had to go to Australia, here in Kansas, to get this engine fixed. This is getting to be a really bad joke. Ha 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 ha. It's a Nissan joke. It is. It is. A Nissan junk. Pretty much. I don't think it's junk. I don't think it'll be junk once we get it running again. So let's hop into getting the work done. So all the bearings are in now and thanks to Ian in Australia who went through the hoops to find these. And they work perfectly. They're the exact size that I needed. Except for him and some shop in Australia these main bearings were unobtainium, even through the dealer. There's just no support for the engine of this car. The, the rest of the car is a Nissan car. But that's one of the things I learned when I got this, that I kind of stepped in a pile of you-know-what. Because this car is a Nissan, but the engine is French. It's made by Renault. We don't stock Renault parts in America, really. Nobody, I mean, they're just not out there. Any of the Renaults in the United States are over 20 years old, and there's no Renault dealers in the United States. The only option I would have had is a Nissan dealership, and when I call them, they say they no longer support that engine. So that left me with zero options. I tried several different sets on eBay, like I showed you in some of the previous videos, and they arrive and they're not even the right bearings. I don't even know what they went to. So I tried that four times and got four wrong sets of bearings. And it said on there, Nissan 1.6 main bearings, and they arrive and I don't even know what they went to. Luckily they're only 30 and $40 a set, so it's not a huge loss, but it was a waste of time. You'd wait a week or two to get the next set, and it was wrong. So you find some more and wait another week or two, and they're wrong, it's just... So thanks again to Ian for finding the correct bearings, and they work beautifully. They measure perfectly, and on the crankshaft, just like in the previous videos, if you watched them, which you really should, because it has all the data and information, the crankshaft was not damaged. Some of the aluminum or whatever material the bearings are made out of kind of separated and stuck to the, the crankshaft surface, we were able to use muriatic acid to melt off the aluminum, but it left the steel spotless clean. There was no scuffs, no damage, no grinding, no grooves, nothing in the crankshaft. So that means I have the stock standard surface that's been unaltered, undamaged. That also means that I can order standard size bearings and not really worry too much about clearances and things. We put them up in there. I was just said, you know what, let's just do it. Let's go for it. We did it and it runs beautiful. Zero oil pressure problems, no check engine lights. It runs like a new car. Let me get the hood opened here. We'll take a look around and then we'll start it up for you guys. So here is the 1.6 liter DDRT, I think it's what it's called, or MDRT, something like that, Renault engine. And as you can see, and many mechanics have mentioned over the years working on these, they're some of the worst engines to work on. They are not fun. It looks like spaghetti. It is, basically. Daniel Sun accidentally forgot to put the dipstick tube in for the oil pan which on 99% of engines would not be a problem. It's like, oh yeah, I'll just unbolt it and put it in. We had to pull the intake off and a whole bunch of things just to get this thing to line back up. It's weaved in and out of like a, a spaghetti noodle in and out of a bunch of parts. 
it, these engines are just not designed very well. Here's our turbo in the very back, which is spinning free and works great. I'm very lucky that that didn't seize up. I think the engine locked up before anything else could be damaged, luckily. Here's our air intake. Here's some more air intake duct work. There's a coolant hose. Here's a blow-off valve for the turbo. There is some coolant lines since it does have coolant that goes to the turbo. Here's some things you guys might recognize. This is the front of the engine that we had all apart. We had the timing cover off and all the pieces out of it. While we weren't at it, we put new timing chains, new timing guides, new tensioner, new gaskets, all kinds of new parts, new belt, new tensioner. Might as well while we have it all apart. So I'll go ahead and start it up for you guys. There's no rattles, no knocking, no noises, nothing. It just runs smooth. I honestly never thought this thing would run again. I thought it's just, just going to, we're going to put it together and it's not going to work or whatever, but I'm very happy. It's alive again. The Nissan junk is alive again. Let's get this thing up in the air and take a look underneath. So we're happy to report that we've had it running for quite a while and there's no leaks. Everything's nice and dry. It was quite an ordeal to get to all the bearings and everything. You have to take this lower oil pan and the upper oil pan. The oil pump bolts to the oil pan and it has its own tiny little timing chain. And it was quite a deal to get everything done. But everything's back together. We have a lot of new parts in this engine. We still have to put the wheel liner and wheel and several other things. And then there's the interior, which we'll show you guys here in a minute, that needs to be reassembled as well. But I'm very excited to get this thing out on the road and try it out. The rest of the car is undamaged. It actually has very low mileage for whatever happened to it. It just stopped it and never was ran again. Luckily, I don't really have to do much else to this car, I don't believe. Let's go ahead and get this thing on the ground and look in the interior. Okay, ladies and gents, we're going to do an abbreviated tour through here because you've seen it once before in the other video, but let's just see what's still tore apart. But you can see it has 87,281 miles to it. So it really, it doesn't have that many and it really presents well. You know, the dash looks great. You know, we move down, looking good still. Um, and then we come into some of the pieces that are still not put back together again. And some more living on the passenger seat. You can, well, maybe he found some change in there when he was taking that apart because, you know, we don't see that part terribly often. As we move to the back seat, yes, yes, even more pieces. I think that is the wheel liner. I guess that's a convenient spot to, for him to keep it. Being that this is his own car, he can put things where he would not normally put things for a customer because we would never do this to a customer's car. But being that this is his, go for it, dude. Not sure what's all in behind the, you know, second seat there, but... Uh, Probably not a whole lot considering the back seat's full of the stuff that still needs to get put back on. Otherwise, if we look at the headliner, that is one thing that he cannot put things on and he did not mark up the headliner at all when he put any of these pieces and parts in here. So that looks good. Not exactly sure what is going on there. There's got a few spots marks up there. Um, nonetheless, maybe he can work on cleaning that off once he gets everything else put back together. As we end up at our steering wheel, like we always do, simple controls there. Nice way to keep, you know, control of that speed and volume on our radio and to keep that focus on the road in front of us. Otherwise, it's kind of a quick, simple little review here, but obviously Wizard's got some work to do to get this ready to actually go on the road long term. So like I mentioned, we have the wheel liner to put in, the wheel. We have to reassemble the interior, which was a part because the previous owner couldn't figure out how to get it out of park. And rather than just depress the little button that we all know about that you can get it out of park, 
They disassembled the whole center console, pulled all kinds of stuff apart to get it. I don't know what they were thinking, but anyways, I have to put it back together. But we'll get this thing back on the road. This will make a good little car. I hope that it lasts a long time. These engines are not known to last tons of time, but I, I do see a lot of them on the road still. Like here in town in Newton, I can see 10 or 12 of them constantly going and going. So they must be not that bad. But being this a Nissan product, guess what? It has a CVT transmission, which also means that this car is not going anywhere until we service the CVT transmission, which this is a gasket and a filter and everything. Like Mrs. Wizard showed you guys, it's got roughly 87,000 miles. I typically like to service these every 50,000 miles. I don't care what your manual says. I don't care what your dealership tech says. I don't. You should service the CVT every 50,000 miles on these Nissan products. If you do that, they'll actually last quite a long time. But if you ignore it for five years and don't do anything, it might die. It very likely could. So before we go anywhere with this car, that is the final thing to get this thing on the road. Service the CVT transmission with all fresh fluid, new filter, everything. And that'll take care of that. Then hopefully it'll be a good little car. I'll test drive it, make sure everything's good and everything checks out good. If it does, then I'll get a good used door to fix the dent that you guys know about. It's a dented driver's rear door. And it should be a clean, good running Nissan junk. It can actually be a juke now. It can actually be a juke now, that's right. It, it, it's a running and driving car that's in good shape. It's no longer junk and it's not a joke because it actually is alive again. So it's been quite the journey to get to this point. I'm very happy about it because it was getting kind of antsy constantly seeing it back there on the lift and it's in the back of my mind, when am I going to get that done? And we had a few days of a slow spot for Daniel's son and I said, you know what? Let's get the junk down and turn it into a juke make it run again and he's like okay and he did a very good job it started right up no banging no knocking no clattering no oil pressure warning light on everything's beautiful so I'm very very happy with that if you're curious what kind of tools we used along the way to get this thing back alive again check my Amazon affiliate link in the description below we get a small cut and we really appreciate it and make sure to hit the subscribe button because there's more bus videos coming down the way. Thanks for watching.